Uh, I have Jill Willows to thank for um, my sponsorship. Thank you very much. <coughs> Profit is the single most important issue of sustainability. The ideal of free international trade is broken. If we, w if we want sustainability in the UK, we must regain control of our markets. First, let me take you on a tour of my sustainable farm, one that continually improves quality, from increasing the nutrient density of its products to creating higher quality product, uh, habitats for its wildlife. A place where everybody is proud of the work they do and the place they do it. Where people are respected and encouraged to grow and live the most wholesome lives possible. Where the drive to farm more and more land with less and less people is squashed and replaced with the comfort that the land we already have can provide us with all our needs and the needs of future generations. None of this is possible without profit. A 500 acre farm in the US called Polyface reinforced this opinion. Polyface, the farm of many faces, the farm that couldn't keep a single per place, sorry, couldn't keep a single person in employment in 1961. The one that now employs 10 people, has a $1 million turnover, feeding 2,000 families, 25 restaurants, and 10 retail outlets. Their mission, to develop emotionally, economically, environmentally enhancing agricultural enterprises and to facilitate their duplication throughout the world. That statement has all the ingredients of a sustainable enterprise, combining people, planet, and profit. It's inevitable that one of these will be the leader. Here in the UK, we're driven by the environment. In Brazil, there is more of a social agenda. The poor relation is always profit. Without profit, none of these can be delivered. In order to consider others and the environment around us, we need a surplus of both time and energy. If we're too busy working to feed our families, this will not happen. Money is a measure of a person's surplus energy, since all money is a claim on human labor. Surplus money equals surplus energy. If we're in debt, we have to work. If we're in credit, we can, we can pay someone to work for us or buy a machine to work for us. Free trade is simply the purchase of a product at the lowest price and then selling it at the highest price without any external interference. The problem with international free trade is that you must be the cheapest producer in the world. And once you become the cheapest, then someone somewhere will be working to come even cheaper or will sell it below their cost of production and subsidize their costs. Free trade is supposed to be about comparative advantage. This should mean that the market looks for the most suitable environment to produce material, favoring climate and topography. Yet the biggest variables between countries are economic, the cost of employing people and the cost of supporting the lifestyle within that country. Things like health and safety, sorry, public health and safety, infrastructure, education, culture, environmental health, and animal welfare. The list goes on, but the true end result of free trade is that it exploits lower living standards. Cheap products are produced where life is cheap. Our society cannot compete with the lower costs in the cheaper countries. By pursuing cheap goods, we are asking our workforce to adopt cheaper living standards currently referred to as austerity. My best example of this is staff housing. In central Kenya, you can provide six sheets of tin and a clay fireplace and call that staff housing. Here in the UK, I provide a three bedroom house with running water, central heating and electricity. This is not a level playing field. If we want a sustainable agriculture, we must secure the price of our production and bring it in line with the costs of our society. Agriculture's importance in the economy is fundamental, since all new wealth comes from the soil, an essential concept that has been forgotten by our politicians who are convinced that we are in a service economy. Increasing earned income is the only way to create growth in our economy. Spending money that we haven't got on infrastructure 
will increase our borrowing levels, forcing the creation of more money to pay for interest, devaluing our wages and savings through inflation, which is theft. There's not much to ask, is it? All we have to do is go out and convince our politi politicians to change their whole economic knowledge and the economy will be sorted. Simple. Sadly, I can't see it working. Although there is some agreement with what I've just said amongst the Green Party, the British National Party, and respect. So we could wait till they take control. No. The only way to reverse the situation is to take control of it for ourselves. To remember that our suppliers are also our customers. We should source our inputs from the same pool of people as we want to sell our produce to. That way we know they have some money. In our current system, the producer and consumers are not connected. Governments and merchants can easily get, get involved. But in a system where the producer feeds his neighbours, there is little room for government intervention. The closer I can get to my consumers, the more chance I have of setting the price. Free international trade will always be a problem, likely setting the price at close to or below global production costs. As a local producer, I must work much harder to achieve a price in line with my situation. It is possible. I must identify a need that suits my land and my principles. Without a high value need, there is no high value market. This is more likely to be livestock or fresh produce, because most arable products are ingredients and not whole food items. We must identify the things that we can do something about and concentrate on those, and not get bogged down on the big issues of concern that we cannot influence. By constantly concentrating on changing the things that I can control, I should find myself getting closer to dealing with those bigger issues through my own personal empowerment. At home, I'm going to pursue a route of soil improvement and input reduction. I'm sure that diverse pastures need to feature within our rotation, and that this pasture will increase our profits through opening new doors to local trade opportunity and getting us off the arable merry-go-round. I can make these changes today, and that should put me on the right path towards further change. The answers to, sustain to a sustainable future lie in the reports of my fellow scholars. That copying nature is better than fighting it that diverse pastures rejuvenate land quicker than methods available to the pure arable farmer, that it is possible to produce products and market them based on value, not just low price, that engaging with our customers and industry bodies is vital, and most of all, that it's fine to be different and lead the way. I need to convert from an international commodity crop producer to a local trading business that pursues quality, takes pride in its work, looks after its people, and works within its own boundaries, while making a sound, inflation-beating profit, which currently means growing at around 7% per annum. We have all seen the answers on our travels. We must take the first step. That will be the hardest one. Ladies and gentlemen, in summary, the sustainability that I have talked about today requires personal empowerment. I have found where my power lies. Good luck finding yours. <laughs>